Howdy folks, TJ here. Gonna be another reading day. I actually wanted to take this brochure outside and do a video. Uh, if you've watched some of my other Atari videos, I started out with the Atari 400-800 brochure as if I just came home from Macy's with a brochure trying to decide what computer to buy. So we're going to cover this brochure a little bit. Now I have shown a little bit of this because in a video I did not long ago it was about the 1450XLD, which I really didn't have much clue about other than seeing little snippets on the internet about it. And I just covered that. This is going to be a little bit more of a video like, okay, I owned my Atari 800, purchased it in 1980. It's 82, 83, and rumors are abound about new computers. And normally I'm about on a three-year cycle. So when I buy a cell phone, for example, I normally use it for a good three years before I buy another one. Uh, once in a great while, I've went to two. Other times I've went to four. A little bit all over the place, but typically around three years is when I get the itch to get something new. So I would have been saying, okay, Atari, what is it that you've now come out with that's going to give me something more than my Atari 800? Now, what's interesting is Atari, after the 400-800, came out with the 1200XL. My buddy Bruce, Bruce, how you doing, Bruce? He never probably watched these videos. But we as kids in the early 1980s, uh, he had a 1200XL. I had the 800. We actually modemed in with each other and did very early texting back and forth via an old 8-bit computer. It was quite fun. And the funny thing is, and I'm hoping to recreate this in my back room, is that we took the closet doors off. Most in California were sliding type. And out of that nook, instead of having clothes and stuff, we made it into a computer area. In my case, I had a computer desk and it had one of those hutches on it. And I had my Atari 800 with, I think it was an Amdeck TV, if I remember, or Amdeck monitor. And I had my 300 baud modem, Supra. And uh, he... In his room, he also lived in the same city I did, but he was a, a couple miles away, maybe a mile away by bike. He did the same thing. And so it was kind of funny that back then, who cares about where the clothes go? We're going to make a nook and we're going to put our computer stuff. I'm hoping to do that in my back bedroom. I don't know if the wife will go for it, but we've got these mirrored sliding doors and they're not that beautiful, to tell you the truth, and they're kind of wobbly. So I'm kind of trying to convince her that maybe if I take those doors off and make a nook and cranny and have a little area that I can make my own in there with either Atari or a mix of Atari and something else. As you can see, I love old 8-bit computers, and yes, I do use them all. I'm not a collector. I mean, I guess I am a collector because I collect them, but I use them and I recycle them around from a back room that's not the tidiest, I'll admit, uh, but it's got some organiz disorganized organization to it because what I take from here, I then take in there and put it in a strategic area and I take that out of there and put it out here. I try to use everything I own. And uh, I try not to let it go for too long, you know, not turning stuff on forever. In my opinion, it may die an early death. If you keep it running, I think they last longer. So I'm trying to do that. I don't know if that will be too successful. Anyway, brochure. So I was going to do this outside. I don't know if you can hear the hum behind me, but somebody's running some chains. I live on about 10 acres here, so most of us have chainsaws and uh, generators and all that stuff. It sounds like they're running a generator. Maybe they're trying to power something up. Maybe he's doing some arc welding. I don't know uh, on his fence, uh, but it's noisy. So I was going to do it outside because it's actually a nice day. It's sunny. It's probably in the mid-60s, which is very on uh, winter like uh, we went from uh, killing power with too much snow on lines and trees falling over to armageddon to spring <laughs> and then it may go back to winter again so i was going to do this outside but i'm in my office now so let's cover this brochure this is this is going to be a long video normally when i do these type they're long they may be a little dry but i try to throw some fun into the discussion like my little back room and I'm gonna make my little nook and cranny out of that closet. So this brochure was a dollar. 
<laughs> and I kind of said that the last time. They wanted a dang dollar. Now, I don't know if I, they would have given it for free or what, but this is, oh, look at those. Those look a little different than the Atari 400-800. These have got kind of a whitish color plastic with a black keyboard area. They do look mighty sexy. Uh, the 1200 XL we're not going to cover in this. It's not in this brochure. Hopefully at some point, I don't think I have any 1200 XL brochures, nor do I own a 1200 XL. I used to. I sold it. May get one again. So we're going to cover the eight or 600 and 800 XL. So I bring this brochure home. Well, do I need one of these? Now, if the 1450 XLD was available, I would have been all over it. Uh, it never came out. If the 1400 XL was available... I probably would have got it. It didn't come out. <laughs> uh, the 800 and 600 did. I did not upgrade. I used my 800 from 1980 to like 1990, 91 when I got married. And at that point in time, I moved to the ST. So, but now if I was someplace in the middle to go to a different one, yeah, that 1450 XLD looked mighty cool. But needless to say, let's say, do I need to upgrade to a 600 or 800? Probably not. So inside of this brochure, and it's a, a 30 some odd page brochure, and I'm gonna try to hold this at a few angles because the, the lighting may put a vicious glare on this. So it, it, this just tries to give you a general image of this is kind of what the brochure looks like. Hopefully this works well enough. So inside it says, new tools for discovering new talents. As a new generation of tools is born, new talents emerge. Now Atari introduces the next generation of computer tools for new Atari home computers with new features that make it easier than ever to explore the world of computing. And it shows this dude next to an Atari. It looks like it's probably the 800XL or, yeah, it's probably that one. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, it's probably the 800 XL, I'm guessing. And it's got a nice uh, monitor to it, and it actually looks like, um, I don't know what monitor it is. It almost looks like a Commodore, but they wouldn't do that, would they? No, that would be stupid. They put somebody else's monitor on there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and it looks like he's, what the hell is he holding? Is that like a wooden harpsichord? I don't know. It's a wooden something. I, I, maybe it's, oh! There's a Pegasus. It's a, it's a wing for an airplane. I get it now. Okay, so as you look closer to the brochure, there is a Pegasus. It looks like maybe it's a, a glider, a hand glider type of plane. And he's using that Atari to design this uh, wing, I guess. And connected to the Atari is a 1050, it looks like, with a modem. Probably a 1030. A 1027 printer, which I never owned. Uh, and a drawing pad. I do not own one of those. Got the drawing pad on there. And then there's a lady on the other end. Looks like she's measuring stuff on the Pegasus. And uh, so let's read a little bit. Um, this, this will be a very long video if I read everything. So I may just glance over a few things. But... Uh, now let's read the first part of it. To help guide you through the selected programs, each has a special help key for professional ease and accuracy. Each offers a sturdy full-stroke keyboard. All of our new computers are ready to hook up to your TV as soon as you bring them home. Their self-test program reassures you of a visual check on computer functions every time you switch one on. Plus, each Atari XL computer offers the ready-to-use convenience of cartridge programs. I think I'll end it there uh, because there's a lot of text uh, and I want to really talk about the 600 XL. But it, it's been basically trying to tie me in to uh, these XLs, you know? It's a little marketing going on here. And the table of index, or contents actually, <laughs> index is in the back, right? Table of contents is in the front. Atari Ho computers, 4 to 11. Peripherals, 12 to 15. Software, 16 to 27. Atari packs, P-A-K-S, packs, no C in there, 28 to 29. And services, 30 to 31. I better make sure I've turned on this, this recording. <laughs> Uh, I, I have a number of times, I say it a lot in my videos, but there's been a number of times I've completely rambled for 30 minutes and the only person listening was me. <laughs> no camera going on. Uh, that's what happened when you get old. All right, so let's go on to the next page. So the next page featuring for uh, feature for feature your best value, the Atari 600 home computer, 600 XL. Now I did buy one of these, I think. 
I purchased it 1980s, late 80s. I was dating my wife. I met her in junior college. I went to the Bay Area. We lived in uh, Bay Area, but further into Silicon Valley. And I think I went to BNC Computer Visions when they had a retail store. And I believe they had a sale on a 600XL and I brought one home. I then gave it away at a future date and time when I got married. But this brochure has a cool picture of the 600XL. I do own one now. You saw a video I recently did on it. It was in the bottom of a bin that it was part of a bulk uh, giving to me a long time back. The keyboard, unfortunately, doesn't hit on every key, but the computer did boot and run, which was cool. So I do own a 600XL that will need some service. But let's read a little snippet. Over on the corner of, there, uh, of the brochure, there's a little young man uh, playing around, and it looks like you can almost, or you could do almost anything with an Atari, David Bueller, student Bueller. 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 <laughs> That's perfect. Perfect for a brochure, Bueller. <laughs> uh, though just a high school junior, 17-year-old David Bueller has a 25,000 bank account. Son of a... That's more than I have now. And I'm an old fart because I'm a poor old fart because I buy stuff like this. Uh, we don't go to Hawaii. I don't go on big world trips. I soak my money, what I can, into this stuff and enjoy it at home. I like my home. Uh, so good old David Bueller, 25 grand, that son of a... I mean, in 1990, when I got married, I had only saved up $10,000 to put a deposit down on the first house I purchased with my wife. It was all my money. I saved $10,000, and as soon as that happened, I've never had money since. I'm a poor SOB. <laughs> David's interest in programming began in eighth grade, so it talks about David. We're going to leave it there. Needless to say, it looks like David did pretty dang well. Good job, Mr. Bueller. Uh, future for future, or feature for feature, your best value. So it gives all the specifics of the 800XL. A quick glance at it. Uh, I'm not going to read all, again, this video would get too deep, but it talks about some stuff. But the technical points is 16K RAM, which was the same as what my Atari 800 came with. Yes, uh, I believe I only purchased it with 16. Uh, with uh, expandable to 64, which I don't believe the Atari 800 at the time was. Max was 48. I think, so you could technically, if, if I'm not mistaken, you could uh, boost this up to higher than the 800. So is the extra memory important? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 48K back then to me seemed like a lot. Uh, 24K ROM operating system with the basic language. Full keyboard stroke. You know, to tell you the truth, the 800XL has a wonderful keyboard. So all that looks the same. Processor looks the same. 6502. Clock speed 1.79 megahertz, special Atari circuits, the 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 graphics display GTIA and Pokey and Antic and all those things. So everything's looking very similar. I mean, this is going to run Atari 800 software. They continued, you know, all these computers could basically run each other's software. So I'm not seeing any big reasons why I'd want the 600 XL uh, graphics modes. It talks about. Um, Sound octaves, none of these, unless I go study it, seem to be much more grander than the 800. So nothing selling me at this point. TV output included with your purchase, owner's guide, blah, blah, blah. Available 1983. Uh, compare the features, compare the price. You'll find the Atari 600 XL offers more of what you're looking for in a home computer for less than you'd expect to pay. So it looks cool, it looks smaller, so if size was, uh, was an issue, then 600XL would be of interest. But for me, I would have said, nah, I don't think I need a 600XL. Uh, but it does look cool, the design of it's neat. And so again, we'll just, uh, I'm not going to read everything because then this video would be super long. It's going to be long as it is, but it looks cool. So uh, 600XL, I would have went, no, I don't think that would have been a big upgrade for me at the time. So next page, the 800 XL. It looks the same, little deeper, kind of getting on the verge of becoming as long as the 1200 XL, but not quite. So the 800 XL has a very similar design. 
little bigger butt <laughs> on the back end. So what I want this one. So this one shows what used to take four hours now takes 30 minutes. Tay Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn makes me think of uh, uh, the baseball TV show. Uh, movie. Major League. A great, great movie. Uh, Vaughn is the last name of the catcher, right? Marine Surveyor. Tavon is often aboard leaky boats as an independent marine surveyor. So this is more of a business. Hey, the 600XL was tailored at a kid, but made much more than I did, 25 grand. But you can see it's talking a little bit more, looking a little bit more like a business approach to it rather than gaming. Uh, and uh, in addition to the essential features of the Atari 600XL, the 800XL home computer has three times the memory with 64K. Now, the other one could be upgraded. 600XL could be upgraded, so it comes stock with it. So, again, if I was owning an Atari 800, would that extra uh, capability intrigue me? Probably not, because I went from 16K, the 800XL, the little pop-up door opens up, and you could easily slap in extra modules, which I did. I purchased a generic brand of memory there. I didn't buy Ataris, but they worked perfectly fine. Uh, let's see, more memory... The specs, let's look at the tech specs. So I'm not going to read the rest of it because it really is just a, a little bit hopped up 600XL in my opinion. 64K RAM, everything else, same processor, same pokey, all the rest looks the same. So at this point, you're basically buying a 600XL with a little bigger butt on the end that came with 64K of RAM instead. Maybe I'm missing some of the fine print here, but I'm not seeing anything that jumps out to me that says, TJ, you need to change from an 800 to an 800XL. I wouldn't have done it because I already had an 800 with 48K of memory which at the time was fine for me. So uh, would I buy this one over the 600? Yeah, uh, obviously it, it, it looks like it's a little bit more capable. And the interesting thing is now the Atari 800 XL is a very uh, intriguing computer for people that want to do upgrades. You could do all sorts of upgrades to the 800 XL that makes it a beast. <laughs> so it, if I would have owned one, then yeah, it could have been one that you could really tr uh, hop up. So that's cool. So the again, the brochure, Looks pretty cool. It's got a nice picture of the 800 XL, and uh, but again, I would have probably even back then as a young young adult said, eh, I don't think I need to um, get an 800 XL. Then it went in, and I'm going to stop here. The book continues talking about the 1400 XL. Uh, well, no, let's talk about this one because I didn't talk about it the last one. We talked about the 1450. So let's cover this one and then end at there, and then look at the rest of the the book. So the 1400 XL. This one's got a little bit more, little bit more business every way. You got a kid making twenty-five grand. Then you got a, a sailboat marine guy. A little bit more business here. Then you've got the business dude with the glasses and everything here. Let's see what's the story about him. Oh, he's a tennis player. With Atari ATP system, the current rankings are instantaneously available around the world. Ron Bookham, Bookman, director of communications association of tennis professionals. Okay, so he's not a tennis player, but showing a tennis dude. Uh, so yeah, uh, making the 1400XL a little bit more businessy. So on the back end trunk, and, uh, for those that like trunks, <laughs> it's got a little bit deeper one, it looks like. But what's changed is the cartridge port disappeared. A little less gamey, right? So let's look at the 800XL. <clears throat> you see that little cartridge port up there? 800 and 600 had it right in prominent. All of a sudden, you go to the 1400XL. Where's that hole? There's no hole there for the cartridge. So they're making it look like a little bit more businessy to me. No cartridges. Uh, so let's read the little first part snippet. The Atari 1400XL home computer talks to other computers through its built-in modem. There you go. A little bit more businessy. You don't have to buy that Supra 300 bond like I did. It comes with one installed. Uh, and talks to you with built-in speech capability. With built-in direct connect modem, you can read the stock market and all that fun stuff. You could do an electronic mail. They didn't call it email. They called it electronic mail. And banking and all those things. And programming languages. So they're really hopping up the computer that talks to you and to the world. So they're really trying to stretch this out. But then you look at it and it says 64K RAM. 
uh, 24K ROM, all that looks the same. Uh, the keystroke, they got a few more keys, it looks like, because the 800 had uh, 62 keys. This one's got 66 keys, and then some extra special function keys, and some other things. And the, instead of having them on the side, like the 800XL uh, over here, they moved them to the top area, right? And so it looks a little bit more industrious, a little bit more business-like. But I'm starting to ask myself, do I want this? Well, it's got a built-in modem, but I got a modem. I can still connect to those uh, BBSs and, and look at ASCII porn. <laughs> uh, I still enjoy that today. That's about the most porn that I get to watch. I'm a married man. I've been married for 30 some odd years. Uh, display all those texts and all this looks the same. Pokey chips and all those things and... 300 baud mode, but the telecommunication side is where they they slap that inside. They're trying to my, <coughs> Excuse me. My experience is that Atari like a Volkswagen Beetle Volkswagen bug Damn look the same a lot and they just add a little little bit more one extra horsepower a side passenger side window uh, lever or something little nippets like the 300 baud modem in this and they continue on the lineage of that computer. It wasn't like a big 8-bit to 16-bit. These were very minor jumps in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, uh, would I have went with the 1400XL? No. Uh, but it looked cool. And then, and, and then this brochure hops onto the 1450XLD. <coughs> which I'm not going to cover here anymore. But needless to say, it's very similar to the, uh, uh, the 1400, but it's got... Uh, the same amount of RAM, and it's got a big, big butt, so you can put a monitor on it, a little bit more business class. It's got extra slots uh, for built-in floppy drives, where the others didn't have floppy drives. So that's where a big step was. But I had a 1050. I could connect floppies to it. So when I went with the 1450, it would have been intriguing. I'll leave it at that. It would have had my juices flowing, but I probably wouldn't have done it because... Not long after the 16-bit computers came out, so let's now cover, and I'm going to try to fly through the rest of this because this video is going to be long. So after the 1450XLD, it's all about printers. So here's a lineage of various different printers. All of them have the 1200XL, 600XL, XL series design to it, which is funny because the 1050 that I own was the design of the... XL, right? Didn't look the part for the 800. The 810 did. Happily, I own... Uh, that was the first one I purchased, a 1050 for my 800. But printers, a 1025 printer. I own two 825s, by the way. They do look quite, quite nice with the uh, 800. The 1020 color printer. The 1027 letter quality printer. My asthma's kicking in. I can feel it. I was outside. All those buds starting to pop up. Then choose a 1010 program recorder or a 1050 disk drive. So this page was all about the data and then printing of the data. So the printers looked cool. I believe I owned a 1025 back in the day. And it didn't, it wasn't great. At least with the software that I purchased. It didn't jive with the software I purchased. But it got me through um, high school. So never had a 1020, never had a 1027. Cassette recorders, I do own a 1010 and a 1050 still. So this was all about data and printing. So it's selling you that have it on a disk drive or tape, put it on paper. Then after that, oh, the communications, 1030 direct connect modem. And after that, the Atari touch tablet, joysticks, the, the uh, uh, wireless joysticks, trackpad, and numeric keypad. So this was all about the peripherals. Just going to show a couple different angles. Hopefully one of these doesn't show too much glare. I have the, you saw just not too long ago, the remote control joysticks. They didn't work that great. Uh, I'm going to, I still need to go out and buy some. I put new batteries in it, but they were older new batteries. I need to go out and buy some new batteries and try it again. See if it actually works better. It was a little clunky. I'll leave it at that. One worked okay. The other one, not so much. 1030 direct connect modem. I own one now, but didn't in the day. 
First modem I purchased was a Super 300. If I remember right, it was blue. Blue in color, does that make sense? I don't remember exactly. I'd have to go back and look. Um, never had a trackball other than the um, red and... I don't remember the brand of it, but I have one in the back room. Never had a numeric keypad. So, all sorts of peripherals. Again, this brochure, I would have been... Oh! Remote control joysticks that I don't need wires for. Yet, in the picture, they don't show that little box that you have to connect to the Atari that takes up a lot of space. And there's antenna that you have to put up on it. It took a lot of connectivity to make those wireless ones work. Then it starts covering how the next generation is learning. So, they, they're now turning on the marketing flair with software. You got the little pictures of the kids playing games and then over on this side the games themselves so this would have been all pretty much old news to me i'm playing atari games sure there's some probably new stuff on here but nothing that's saying tj you need to upgrade uh develop new talents refine existing ones more software i'll just show you a quick picture i'm not going to yap about it too much because I, I need to go take my puffer in a few minutes. I'm starting to feel a little asthmatic here. Uh, for running a business of your home. So more software. So they really have a lot of software coverage in here. Uh, more, more software. Discover the languages of the next generation. So all of this would have been interesting. This would have gave me an hour or two of good reading to kind of read up and decide if I really needed to upgrade or not. More software, games. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm guessing this brochure is probably online someplace so you can look at the closeness of it. I'm just kind of blowing through it now. Coming your way in a very near future beyond the generation of the exciting new Atari home computer products introduced on the preceding pages, there are many more on the way. Here's just a sample. For the sporting, there's tennis. Oh, that's a cartridge. Soccer, that's a cartridge. Football, it's a cartridge. Those are just games. I don't know what the big marketing there. Atari Thrills Come Home, Pole Position, Joust, Donkey Kong, Pingo, Miss Pac-Man. You know, none of this was groundbreaking. The, Atari, like I said, was very much, in my opinion, kind of like the Volkswagen Beetle. It looked very similar to the original one, and then for, for 40 bazillion years, they kept incremental updates until it could no longer pass smog in California in the 70s, and then they you finally said, okay, it's the end of the Beetle here in the United States. Uh, I don't remember the last year they sold a Beetle in the United States. Was it early 80s, late 70s? Uh, they started having smog issues. And then down down south of California, though, there's still plenty of Beatles poking around. And there's a lot of Volkswagens in California. But they're old ones for uh, antique people like me that enjoy like my old bus, 67 bus. So let's continue on with the brochure. Uh, you're, you're off to running with an Atari all-in-one PAX. So here's the PAX. So the same dang PAX that they've been packing, packing, <laughs> That's always a fun word. You spit on everybody. So there's the packs, and it basically is, you know, computer bundles that you can purchase. Much looks the same. All this would have been okay. Yeah, it is kind of a sexy looking new computer, but the 800 is a tank. It looks still awesome. Uh, you always have ties to Atari, uh, and it looks like magazines and and uh, public domain stuff they're yapping about what was it the a something what was it the a apx atari program exchange that's right apx i remember that atari connection and that is it so in a nutshell long video to say what i have upgraded 1983 ish when they started pimping this stuff out no i didn't <laughs> i continued on with my 800 from 19 80 when I purchased it until when I got married. 10 years, I used a heck out of my 800 and then purchased a Mega 2 ST from San Jose Computer. And I remember driving there uh, with my wife. It was like an hour and a half drive from where I lived to buy my Mega 2 ST, supporting your local dealer. 
Nowadays, you buy everything from Amazon or directly over the internet. There's not many people carrying, you know, you can go to Best Buy and buy a computer, but it's a little different, you know? It's just not the same time. I miss those days. I'm sure many of you do. But at the same time, we're in a new generation. You gotta move on, as they say, which I've done. But it's allowed me, the internet, to s uh, explore things that me in the United States, like a Sam Coupe, I would have never had a clue about. I would have maybe seen it in a magazine in the United States and glanced over it as not important. I've got Atari, I've got Commodore, I've got Apple here in the United States. Little did I know that there's a ton of fun on these computers and I wish I would have purchased my Sinclair ZX80 along with my Atari 800 because I was juggling what to buy ba back in the day. I purchased the 800, I was smart, but the ZX80 is now a fun computer I enjoy today and I'm glad I own one. So anyway, that's it. Cool brochure. Uh, what will I do next? Where well, we're gonna break out the 800XL. I have two. I've got a boxed version, and I've got one that I shown in a video not long ago that was part of the bulk acquire that I did, and it booted up and ran, and it had some 80 column addition to it inside that I need to explore more because I was able to turn it on, but then I was able to do something, and it had 80 columns. <laughs> that was something I didn't uh, do back in the day with the 800. Although I may have had a cartridge or something that you could slap in that allowed me to do it. It's been a long time. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Next one I do, I think, will be the 800XL unboxing, and slap it up to the, the TV and test it. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of your Saturday.